Uh, hi everyone. So um, um, I'm I'm Rob Dyke from uh, from Trustonic, and uh, for the for the next part of this discussion, I'm going to be presenting about how you deploy trusted applications onto onto commercial devices. So I'm just going to share my screen. Just one second. Okay. So so I'm just going to just talk to a few slides. So yeah. So my name's Rob Dyke. I work for for Trustonic, and I'm a uh, field applications engineer so my role is to to promote uh, TE technology uh, to the developer community essentially and um, I know that there's been some questions on the message board regarding how you go forward and, and deploy so what I will say is that what I'm going to talk about um, in this in this presentation um, doesn't necessarily apply to what you'll need for the for the hackathon but it's an area that you might encounter as you progress and potentially deploy your your um, your ideas in the future to um, to, to devices with uh, TEs present, so um, this is just really for your general education about how how you go forward and and actually deploy a, a trusted application. So don't feel you need to understand all of the ins and outs of this for the purposes of of the uh, the hackathon. Okay, so what I thought I would start by doing is just. Kind of just define what we mean by a trusted application manager. So um, essentially, this is a uh, an online server which is responsible for um, communication with the the TE endpoint with the device, uh, and it's responsible for authorizing the installation of a trusted application. So it's kind of the the gatekeeper to to allow that technology access and. Um, you know, this is something that companies will will then go forward to um, to stand up and offer as a service for developers, or developers may may implement themselves, and and it uh, it enables business models which um, which we've touched upon earlier in 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 the uh, in the presentation. So it enables people to essentially charge for technology access to to um, to the TE, and it acts as a control point really. Um, so. So yeah, so the, the main purpose of it is to, to, to allow trusted applications to be deployed, but it also has some other features. So you can imagine you, you deploy your trusted application. Let's say it's, a, um, it's a, a payment kind of application. So say, for example, you're going to issue a, a kind of virtual payment card to the device. Let's so say you're doing something like that. Um, you may want to then subsequently personalize that application kind of instantiate a number of keys or um, security critical data such as the, the the card number or something like that so a trust application manager can can push key material or data to a a, a trusted application in a completely secure fashion as well so um, you know, some tams go forward to do this and um, you know as part of this infrastructure that the uh, the tam provider, would would set up. They would also um, use hardware security modules to, to secure that communication. So, for, as you can imagine, if you want to kind of uh, you know, send personalization data or send cryptographic keys, um, this this communication needs to be anchored in a in a hardware security module. So that's typically what a, a TAM will do. So. Um, so that's kind of essentially what their their role is, and it's 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 required for um, for deployment to actual actual devices that we see present in in in, in the marketplace. Really, okay. So so that gives you a bit of a definition, a bit of a flavour for what it actually is. Um, I'm just going to move forward to just to the next slide, which kind of gives a you know an overview for what actually happens then. So so let's say you know we we've written our our um, our application, let's say it's a, a mobile application that we wish to then um, put into production. So if we've, you know, we've we've had our hackathon, we've had our um, beta testing, and we're ready to, to deploy to to the general public. Um, so the service provider here in this diagram, they're they're providing the application there, and they're also being the role of the, uh, the trusted application manager. Um, so you know, the service provider can also perform the TAM role, you know, many will do that, or they may work with a third party to, to, um, to provide this service. You know, perhaps they don't um, w wish to make the investment in the HSMs, the server and what have you. So in this diagram, I show the service provider. 
So these are the guys that have written the app. So step one, you would just publish your, your application to the App Store, be it Google Play or iTunes or what have you. Um, and um, you're, you're, you're then, then the application is then ready for people to download. So you do that in, in, in the normal way. Um, and then when the user decides they want to use your, your service, they'll download the, the app from, from Google Play. And then on the first time it runs, what it will actually do is um, create a security domain on your device. So on that user's device, sorry. So that's then a, a place where keys can be stored, where where the applicate where the, where the trusted application at, when it's at rest can be can be encrypted and and kept safe. Um, so on the first run, this will then happen, and then also at the same time, um, the the application will reach out to the to the dam in step three. And it will say, you know, please approve the installation of my my trusted application. And it's at this point, really, that the TAM can then perform a number of checks. It can determine whether this is a valid device, whether it's a, an, a trustworthy endpoint. So it can it can validate the uh, the the device that's that it's being installed on. So perhaps it's a an emulator, and in this case, we don't want to deploy applications to an emulator. We want it to be a a device that's gone through a, a secure factory um, route of trust, you know, in, in a step, you know, before it can be deemed trustworthy. So, the application will reach out to the service provider, which is running the TAM in this diagram, and then at that point, it will then potentially validate the device, um, perhaps, it, you know, establish a counter so we know how many trusted applications have been deployed for billing purposes and things like that, and then essentially authorize the um the the creation uh, of of the the installation sorry of of the device so in step 5 then we see that the the, the trust application is installed um is then it can then be stored in uh, secure storage and that also at that point the uh, the tam may then send some personalization data down to the app as well so um and and, and that's essentially it really you know the tam is there to to be that gatekeeper for 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 access to to the uh, the te domain and um so um that was really all i wanted to to to, to present 